interesting. Sorry, I had to do that. I got lots of snugs in. He was anxious. The he, dog? He needed love, yeah. That's probably why you love him. Because you're drawn to him because he's anxious and needs love. Just like you. Just like me. <laughs> anxious and in need of love. <laughs> probably oh, true. It's too true. Hello, and welcome to the Hardly Working Podcast, the show where we talk about life, love, and labor. Hosted by the couple that works, plays, and stays together, my name is Kelly. And I'm SP. I come in with a lot of energy when I don't start the show. I can tell. Because I'm just jealously waiting, like, (laughs) I (laughs) should be doing the intro. (laughs) I should. (laughs) Hi. Hi. I love you. I love you, too. It's good to be with you. I know. It's been quite a week. A weird week, but a good week. Yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, overall, really, really good, but yeah. definitely some weird stuff, some ups and downs. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, If we sound a little different, if the energy is different, it's because we survived a natural disaster. In fact... Not one, but two natural disasters. Two natural disasters at the same <laughs> time. We're here in Los Angeles, and you've probably heard all over the news the very accurate reports of the deadly hurricane that struck... Not just Southern California, but the whole West Coast. Yeah. So we are in the midst of that. It started Sunday. We're recording today on Monday, and it's still going on. It's been wild and wet and uh, not that bad. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, we live in California. We have cold waters. A hurricane was never going to be what it's like in Florida. But we have gotten a lot of rain. And I don't know if you've seen any videos of like Palm Springs and places like that where it's literally flooding in the streets and cars are being swept away. Yeah. That's not what we're experiencing yeah, here here's in my LA. Prob- but here's my problem right. with the videos is that you never really know when a video was taken. That's true. So I've seen I saw a ton of videos on TikTok of Palm Springs and mm-hmm. different places. But it's not necessarily from this week. It's yeah, they're just, just taking advantage of the hurricane. Yeah, that for, sounds terrible. For views and likes. How dare you? Who would do that for views and likes? Like and subscribe. Just Thank kidding. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we didn't yeah. do that. So we survived that. And in the midst of the flooding in the hurricane, we also had an earthquake. Yeah. An earthquake that I didn't feel. But Only you I felt. Yes. I was ready. I'm very in tune with earthquakes. I always tell you I can hear them before they happen. It's very weird. It's that animal instinct. Yeah. But I'm also not really good at communicating what's happening. And I know <laughs> we were playing a game on the floor with our daughter. It was a rainy day in the middle of the summer. You know, we had hot cocoa, made some homemade whipped cream, sitting playing games. And I start to feel the shake, the one, two. And I, I go, babe. And then I stop talking. And you go, what? What's going on? Use your words. What is it? <laughs> I thought there was like a big spider somewhere. Yeah, no. Sometimes I don't want to freak you out, but like my initial reaction is to is to say something to you, but then I'm like, hold on a second. Like, are you? Is it in your head or is it really an earthquake? But was confirmed that it was an earthquake like two seconds later because we all got the drop cover, drop roll, drop. What is it? (laughs) There's a drop it like it's hot announcement (laughs) on the phone. (laughs) When it is. It was the stop, drop, and roll. There it is. No, no, no. That's when you're on fire. Drop and cover. Something like that. You get under a desk or something. There's no desks in our house. Well, yeah, we literally got a notification that was like, you're going to die. But it really wasn't that bad of an earthquake. Here's Here it is. The deal. Drop, cover, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Protect yourself. Yeah, the earthquake wasn't that bad. This has been a USGS shake alert. <laughs> That's literally what <laughs> know, it said. That's what it says. Literally what it said. But we survived, y'all. We All survived. of us did. Uh, we didn't have it bad as bad no. as places like San Diego. Yeah. Because uh, Kelly was telling me this when we were putting the show together, and I confirmed it with many articles on the internet, that in San Diego, not only are they getting clobbered <laughs> or potentially getting clobbered by a hurricane, but it's also mating season for the tarantulas. So I, I did some research. Yeah, what are the names? Are there any names for it? It's like Sharknado? Oh, yeah. Like, is oh, yeah. This? Okay. So get this. It says uh, <laughs> they're expecting thousands of tarantulas to be seeking mates and making babies during the hurricane. Hope so lots get washed away. Hey, uh, lots of people, including us, thought that this was like a sci-fi FX, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Sharknado type of event. 100%. Stuff like Sharknado, Piranaconda, and even Zombievers. I know I hadn't heard of that either. What is that? It's just like Sharknado. Okay. Two terrifying things put together just like this. Okay. A hurricane and tarantulas. So some of my favorite names that I saw for this were Spider Cane. Yep. Tarantula. 
<laughs> eight-legged cyclone. Okay, it's like eight-legged freaks. Exactly. And my personal favorite, leggy gale, tarantula typhoon. <laughs> <laughs> they even had a subtitle. What? Leggy gale, because gale like wins. Yeah, but this one was called Hillary. Yeah, yeah, but Gale is like gotcha, Gale Force gotcha, Wins. Gotcha, it's not gotcha. a name. Yeah, no, I just thought we could have called it Leggy Hillary Tarantula Typhoon. Maybe. Anyway, uh, so our hearts go out to all of the people afraid of spiders. I thought you were going to say all the tarantulas out there trying to mate in the rain. <laughs> it's tough wind. to mate as a tarantula. I don't know. You know yeah, you sorry just... for all you people scared of spiders. I would be locked in my house with wood over my windows and everything because there ain't no way. Rain, I'm I can handle tarantulas. No, no, yeah, no. Um, if I were to name it, it would have just been oh god, oh god, this is my nightmare, is what I would have <laughs> yeah, called yeah. it. Yeah, I would have uh, also jumped on that. That's a good name, yeah. So, um, obviously, it's been uh, apparently hurricane season here, which is new to us Californians, yeah. and I had to look into it because I was like, why is this one named Hillary? Like, it seems a little intentional right well it's not so i learned some stuff and i've got some fun facts oh yeah fun fact from this guy first of all there's like they rotate through names okay every six years okay so there's like a batch of alphabetical names that they rotate through so like hurricane hillary just happened in six years from now in 2029 it has the potential to come back up Okay. So that's how they do it. But there's more to this story. Okay. And it involves, in my opinion, the patriarchy. Yeah. Hold oh. on to your butts, y'all. Okay. So here's what I learned. We didn't start naming in the United States, naming hurricanes until 1950, or excuse me, in the 50s. Okay. There were hurricanes, I'm told. In fact, the first reported and recorded hurricane was on Columbus's last sailing mission. Of course. Of course. Scandal noted. Forget that guy. Oh my gosh. But it was like 1509 or something. Dang. It was the first recorded one. We started naming them here in the 50s, 1950s. I wonder why we started naming them. I don't know. But I'll tell you what my problem is with it. Okay. So in the 50s, uh -huh. they decided we have to name these terrible events, these disasters. Oh How gosh. should we name them? Oh, let's just give them women's names. How about men's? No, just women. That's terrible. Only, so they're only naming these terrible disasters after women. That <laughs> changed 20 years later in the 70s. Okay. They're like, eh, we should probably put some guys' names in here. It seems a little sexist to just use women's names for things that are only scary and bad. Yeah, that's true. So in the 70s, it turned into men's names, and I believe they alternate every other year. So next year will be all, men's all men's okay, names. Okay, did you look into it? Is my name on the list? You know, I did not see your name on the list. What about your name? I did not see my name because mm. my name's... Not very American. I know, I was, but either one, like a Hurricane Sean or Hurricane Patrick. Uh, no, I didn't see either. I did okay. see some that uh, I didn't write down here, but they were funny to me. But I will tell you the ones that I did write down. Okay. Because I started to ask myself, what happens with these names? Yeah. Do they just keep using them? Is there going to be another Hurricane Katrina? Mm. Well, uh, what, too soon? Yeah, I don't <laughs> it was know. It like what? 20 years it ago. It feels like we shouldn't use those names again. And that's exactly what happens. Oh, okay. So if... If a hurricane, hurricane, if a hurricane, hurricane, if a hurricane in Here America, comes a hurricane, hurricane, it comes a hurricane, hurricane, Katrina, Katrina, Katrina. No, <laughs> that's what the song says. If there's a hurricane that's bad enough that okay. causes a certain amount of damage or loss of life, they retire the name. That's good. They, they, that's the right thing to do. Just they, for the record, we should that that is fair. Yes. So they take it off the list forever. So there will not be another hurricane named Katrina. Okay. What I started deep diving into was the list of retired names. <gasps> okay. Now, what's interesting is, as you might expect, the Atlantic has a very long list of retired names because yes. they get hurricanes. Mm -hmm. The Pacific side, where we live, doesn't have a very long list. But we have a list? There is a list. Not just a list of names, obviously, but of retired names. Here's my issue, though. It seems like the East Coast took like the reasonable names... Because we get crazy ones. We got weird ones. Let me give you an example, a couple examples <laughs> of the East Coast. We are California, so... <laughs> so, well, it West gets Coast weird. is the best coast. You might not Sorry. think that after okay. this. So, <laughs> <laughs> East Coast, Atlantic side, they have names, uh, retired names like Bob, Carol, Erica, Thomas, like normal people yeah, yeah, yeah. names. Boring names. Let me give you the, some of the Sorry. names. I just picked a few off, off the list. Okay. Retired Pacific Coast names. In 1970, 
Adele was retired. Aww. Aww. I like Adele. It gets way worse. Okay. In 1991, Fefa was retired. Fefa? Fefa. We, Fefa. Not, yeah, not Carl. We named one Fefa. F E F A. Is that a girl name or a boy name? Couldn't tell you, but it's retired. So I guess it's. 91, huh? Any more 90, research on 91? Good 91. year. 91. It was a good year. It was a good year to be born. Yeah, it was. Oh, this man. This girl was born in 91. That's right. Now everyone knows You're your age. <laughs> eh. 24. <laughs> in 2004, this name was retired, and the name is ISIS. <laughs> like the terrorist group. It gets worse. <laughs> what? In 2001, that's when we retired the name Adolf. In 2001. I think that name should have been retired a long time ago. Okay, from wait, everything. Wait, 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 was that retired because it was an actual hurricane that happened? Or did they just go through and they were like... <laughs> Maybe this name should just be taken off. Like the list. sixty years off of after Could World War II. Could you imagine if they're like Hurricane Adolf is heading your way? I think that's, that's what terrifying. happened. That's what happened. No, I had been out of wherever I was so quick. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they took it off just because they were like, this doesn't look good anymore. I mean, they, they had sixty have. years to do that. That's true. So uh, Hurricane Adolf was taken off in two thousand one. Dang. Okay. I'm sure. Good choice. Yeah. Okay. And the last one was just my favorite. In uh, 1987, they retired the name Knut, which I'm sure is pronounced Nut, but it's K-N-U-T. So Whose name is that? That's what Who I'm saying. Who is naming their kid Knut? Knut. Or not. <laughs> They're like, uh, He's here's, making up names here's at this my point. kid, Knut Isis Adolph Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> we took all the retired Pacific names. Oh, my God. That's like when celebrities name their kids weird things like Apple or yeah. Northwest. Oh, I heard something about this. Mm -hmm. Apple and North, those are weird. But remember when Elon had, I don't think it was his most recent kid, but... I couldn't even tell you how to pronounce that name. Yeah, because it was like... It was like symbols or X's or yeah, something. Yeah, like Greek letters or something yeah, like yeah. that. And I was like, these people are ridiculous. And then someone was like, that's not really the kid's name. That's just what they tell everybody so you can't Google the kid. Oh, and I was like, if that's really the case, smart. kind of genius. I don't know that that's the case, though. I think North's name is really Northwest. Oh, yeah. But but Elon's kid with all the symbols yeah. and stuff, probably not his real name. Can't fill mm. that out on a Scantron. That, you <laughs> could. No. Who knows? All right. Wow. So we got a big, big week. There's a couple other things that I want to talk about, or excuse me, a big, big episode. There's a couple other things worth mentioning from this week. We talked about your dad's surprise birthday party. Yeah, which wasn't only a surprise to him, but a surprise to my brothers who weren't invited. Suckers. <laughs> Shout out to Ryan and Sean. Who Sorry, guys. Who evidently found out about the surprise party that they missed via this podcast. Yeah, which I'm really sorry about. I didn't even think about it, but they did tell me at dinner on my dad's birthday that they were like, it was a surprise to us. We didn't know. <laughs> That's why we called it a surprise party. Yeah, yeah. Surprise. But, you didn't know about it. Yeah, sorry. sorry. But that was good. That was fun. And, but then while I was out of town, and I'll talk about that in a second, while I was out of town, you celebrated your dad on his actual birthday. I did. This was a big birthday for my dad. Um, and I could tell that he wasn't necessarily excited. I think the older you get, I mean, I'm feeling that now. You're just not as excited about your birthday as you used to be. Mm -hmm. So we went on like one of those little scavenger hunt thingies. It's not really a scavenger hunt, but you know. It's the trendy TikTok thing yeah, yeah, yeah. where you on the camera can see, see two options, but the person picking can't. Yeah. Did you record it? No, you know, I thought about recording it and had every intention to record it and then really lived in the moment. It's why I would never make a great TikTok content maker or creator because I... Don't capture same content. Thing, it was the same thing at the Taylor Swift concert. I just wanted to be present and in the moment that I spent a lot of money for. Like, I just wanted to be present and enjoying it. I didn't want to see it through a screen. So thankfully, she hired her husband to see it through a screen That's the right. entire time. He did a great job. I basically recorded... 90 seconds of every song. Of that and concert. I really appreciated that. You're so welcome. But with my dad, I didn't. Although we had, I had Brooklyn, which mm. was really cool because she felt like she was in on it. And so she would, she would give him the choices every time. And you know, the one thing he said to me was that he didn't want to really make any decisions or any choices. And he didn't really have to. He just had to pick. The only choice he had to make was which card he was going to pick. And then we would go and do stuff. But we did lots of stuff. You know, we got him coffee, got him some like actual coffee to drink and then coffee for his Nespresso machine. Um, I took him to the bookstore. He loves Barnes and Nobles. Took him there to get some stuff. And his probably favorite thing of the day, and my favorite thing was he got to go to the Nike store and get some new Nikes. Not a sponsor, which was cool. Like really cool. And it was something that he was like, I've been wanting to get new tennis shoes. And I just, 
didn't know and haven't had a chance to and didn't know what to get. And so we got to get some. And I think he felt really celebrated and really loved and cared for. Then the brothers came and we went to Din Tai Fung, which my dad loves and what we all love, my whole family loves. And it was a fun time. Um, And then we kind of spoiled him with dessert, took him to Crumble Cookie and Salt and Straw and sat and talked and just hung out with him on his birthday. And I think he had a great time. We all had a really great time hanging and chatting and talking. And I really think he felt celebrated. And at the end of the day, he said something to me like, um, he wasn't really looking forward to this birthday, but it actually ended up being better than he thought it was going to be. And that really meant something to me. And I think it meant something to him and my mom and my brothers. So it was a good day. It was a good hang all in all. We were at the Americana. It was great. Perfect weather, honestly. It does sound like it was great. It was great. I know he got a lot of gifts, but I'm not sure if he got more gifts or if you in Brooklyn got more gifts. Because when I flew back home on Friday, I was like, whose birthday was it? Dad's birthday. Because I got some Nikes too. Mommy in Brooklyn Brooklyn got got some shoes and some outfits and some books. And we were at the Americana. What can I say? Yeah. Daddy was working to. To pay for all the fun things we did. Thank you. (laughs) That's why I couldn't go. Is because yeah, I didn't have to work. I just had to pay for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. uh, What were you doing? Why couldn't you be there? That's a great question. (laughs) Thanks. I um, I don't do family get-togethers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's this is a family part of the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but before we get into that, um, I just wanted to say it was really cool to hear how well it turned out. I was bummed to miss it. Uh, I would have really loved to have been there, mostly for the Din Tai Fung. It's the best. But also for your dad. Yeah. Um, But honestly, I know you, it was something that was on your mind for a long time. I think you were picking yeah. up on the fact that uh, it might be a the one that you weren't sure if your dad wanted to celebrate as much as a, just an ordinary birthday. And you, I really felt like you went out of your way to try to make it something special. Thanks, babe. With even, even through small gestures like the what we're calling the scavenger hunt and that kind of stuff yeah. and planning Din Tai Fung and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And having Brooklyn, I'm sure, was a positive. But uh, it was as cool to me to hear your dad feel good about it as it was to hear you tell me that he felt good about it because I knew that meant something to you too. Yeah, I, we don't have to like keep talking about it, but I, I'll say this. I think I told you this, but I mean it like my dad just does so much for all of us, for my brothers, for me, for you, um, for your family. Like he just does so much all the time. I, I think it was important to me that he felt taken care of and loved on a day that should be all about him because he always goes out of his way to just make sure people are okay and to make sure everyone's taken care of. So I agree. Probably get a little bit of that from him. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely have that in you. And it's true. Uh, Your dad does do a ton. Shout out to you, to Mark. We love you. We know you're watching and thank you for all that you do. We love you and happy birthday. And if you haven't told your dad or your mom how grateful you are for them, go do it. Do it because your dad might die like mine did. Shut up. He's dead. <laughs> Stop it. He's gone. Shh, and if I wanted to tell him something, I couldn't. You could tell my dad. And then he would tell my dad. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, boy. Oh, gosh. Anyway, to answer your original question. Yeah, what did, why didn't you come? I was working. We haven't talked a ton about what I do. Uh, a lot of people know I do a lot of DJing and hosting for people. events, for people, for companies. Uh, when we're here in L.A., it's a lot of the studios, Disney, Marvel Studios, Lucasfilm, Pixar, Fox, or what was Fox and is now, I think, just 21st century. And uh, when I'm on the road, I'm usually, one, Kelly's usually with me as a production mm-hmm. assistant. She does a lot of work with me and for me to help me. We're doing conferences, conventions, that kind of stuff for, you know, companies yeah. all over. I won't name them, but lots of them. So I got an awesome opportunity through our friends, Corey and Tara and uh, our friends over at Disney to fly up to San Francisco Yeah, and go to Lucasfilm, their actual like offices. I don't think it's their studio necessarily. Maybe it is, but it's their offices. They got a big theater in there. You Maybe if you're into that stuff, you might've seen the Yoda fountain. It's a fountain with Yoda on top it's of it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And uh, so we actually got to do an event at Lucasfilm Uh, for the premiere of Ahsoka, their newest live action show. So that was really cool. This was different, though, than a normal premiere. Usually, if if you're not in the industry, you don't know how it works. I'd say like two weeks before a movie 
or sometimes a TV show comes out, we'll have a premiere or a world premiere. So that means you'll be somewhere typically in Hollywood. Maybe the, like a lot of the ones we do, we'll do in Hollywood and they shut down Hollywood and Highland and we do it all on the street. It's a huge red carpet event. All the celebrities and the talent, the directors, the producers, everyone from the movies there, they walk the carpet, they watch the movie, they go to an after party. This was different, though, uh, especially in light of there's a lot happening in the industry right now yeah. with uh, multiple uh, organizations on strike. Yep. So it's a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, I was really happy, though, to be a part of this because the pivot was awesome. So instead of just doing one like premiere for this, we did the first two episodes. It was a TV show. Just doing the premiere, we did five events pretty much concurrently. Uh, we did two on the East Coast and three here on the West Coast. They weren't exactly the same time. I think yeah. the West Coast ones were, though. So we did uh, this event for Ahsoka. We, we screened the first two episodes for a ton of fans. We did. Uh, there was one in New York, one in Orlando at Disney World, I believe. That's cool. And then there was three over here. There was one in at El Cap on Hollywood and Highland. Shout out to Corey Live. Corey Live. Shout out to El Cap. And then there was one at Disneyland. And then there was the one we were doing. Uh, in Luke, at Lucasfilm in San Francisco. Which is really cool because like, you haven't been to Lucasfilm Studios. or no, this is the first time I had been up there. So it's it was amazing. really cool to do that. Uh, it was me and Michelle, who I work with all the time, and she's awesome. Shout out to Michelle. Love, love, love working with Michelle. And I worked she's with great. a new Michelle that I hadn't uh, met before who lurk, works up at Lucasfilm. So it was a ton of fun. Yeah. Uh, we started maybe 6 o'clock. I was DJing. They have a theater in there. So we were DJing, keeping the energy going. And I had found these really cool remixes of Star Wars tunes. Like That's things that fun. It was really fun. There were songs that you might not even know were Star Wars-ish. Like you would, if you were familiar with going through, what do they call it in Disneyland? The Star Wars world? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Wars Land. Star Wars Land. If you walk through there, it was some of the stuff from the soundtrack that you would have heard from oh, there. Oh, that's fun. Mix that in. It was really fun. There's songs that you might not uh, totally know, but you'd hear like Darth Vader's breathing in the back or you'd hear like a <laughs> quote. So it was really fun. That's and really cool. There was like a lot of times where the, the group would be, you know, finding their seats and talking and then they would like hear something and they'd make eye contact with me and they'd be like, nice. That's fun. like, that's for you. Yeah. So that was fun. We got to DJ. Uh, we did that for about an hour. Then we did a giveaway and it was crazy. So I get up in front of this whole room of people. They're so stoked to see Ahsoka. And I was like, hey, we're doing a raffle. You all got your raffle tickets as you came in. We're giving away not one, not two, not three, but 80 prizes. <gasps> That's a lot of... Did you get through them all? No. Okay. Spoilers, we got through 40 of them. Uh, and they were all... The first 40 were all lightsabers. And then the next thing, we're going to switch to a different item. But we gave out 40 lightsabers oh, in about awesome. 15 minutes. It was it that's was pretty crazy. fun. Yeah, and we even were had this... They like the really cool lightsabers? I thought they were cool. Okay. I didn't really... I mean, I saw a couple pictures, but... Yeah, yeah, I didn't know what you'd given away until this moment right now. I didn't yeah. know it was the lightsabers that they were dancing with. It was so cool, which made for a great photo op at the end by the Yoda Fountain too with yeah, everybody. Of but also one of my favorite moments is I got to hop up on stage and they had a ton of uh, video and, and photography crew there from Lucasfilm yeah. capturing the whole event because like I said, it's in five different places. They're putting it all together for some stuff. And uh, I was like, I'm going to try to get you try to get you some great footage. Sorry, I've got the Topo Chico in me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I was like, uh, so I was like, everybody stand up, put your lightsabers up. And I played that song that I, I like to play to get people hyped, which is ping pong, uh -huh. which is like, you basically either use your cell phone lights or in this case, lightsabers. You can put your hands up, whatever. It was back and forth and back and forth. And then it kept getting faster and uh -huh. faster until the drop hits and then everybody goes crazy. That's so fun. It was a lot of fun. It was really cool. I've never gotten to do it with lightsabers. That's cool. So That's it was a really fun thing you can talk about. So I just ran into the microphone. Don't mind me. That's really <laughs> fun though. It was an awesome time. So yeah. that was the... Uh, premiere and fan event for Ahsoka that I got to do. That's great. If you're a Star Wars fan, check it out. Everyone in the theater loved the first two episodes. I think it's coming out this Friday. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, check it out. It's on Disney+. Plus. You're going to love it. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, of course. Just like we check out everything that's on that's Disney+. That's true. Plus. Everything that's Marvel. Everything. Lucasfilm. Well, this Lucasfilm, yeah. Pixar, Disney. All the same all thing, of them. yeah. All of them. All of it. All right. So uh, I'm looking in here. I've got some emails. Emails. We love emails. We do love emails. Thank you to everyone who's emailing us. You can yeah. do it at hardlyworkingfans at gmail.com. Yep. Emailing, commenting. We appreciate that. Shout out to Shelby. Oh, yeah. Shelby. Very Always commenting on our it. TikToks, on our YouTubes. You're awesome. On our YouTubes. On our YouTubes. Yeah. I feel like 100 years old. Yeah, you are. But you can always hit us up at hardlyworkingfans at gmail or text me, DM me, whatever you want. Yeah. If, you, if you have that, then feel free. Yeah. Uh, you know, last week, we got an email from your dad. We did. Which means I need to start off 
from with an email from your mom. My mom? Your mom emailed Of course in. she did. What did she say? Um, this is from Melody. Hi, Melody. Hi, Melody. And she said, love watching you guys every week. Okay, trying to help. Hank the Tank was captured. So sad. <gasps> little follow-up from last week. We mentioned that there was a bear breaking into people's houses. And stealing things, yep. And so uh, she's following up to let us know he's been captured. He's been captured. And by that, we mean she's been captured. Because it's think a she. It's a she. Yeah, yeah. Hank uh, the Tank is... Is a woman. A woman, yeah. And I, we have not thought of a better name for her yet. No, and we didn't spend any time trying to. No, no, no. So sorry, sorry, sorry. Send in your thoughts. So she goes on and says, she sent in a, a story. Okay. But without a link. Okay. So I found the story myself. Okay. And it checks out. But here was her. <laughs> uh, I do my it research. checks out. Okay. Here's what she sent in. Rabbits overrun a Florida town. Apparently, they let these rabbits loose. And now they have populated so much that they outnumber the people in the town the news is calling it a rabbit invasion that has left the locals hopping mad. But I'm um, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. It was a perfect story. It uh, is. It's similar to the story, except this was done on purpose. You remember was that the story about that guy that started a pond in his backyard and and put a bunch of frog eggs. Oh my gosh, we should do that. So this wasn't even just a, a written story. This was on TikTok. He filmed it. He this dude yep. was like, I acquired. I th- it was either two or three. Million, two million frog eggs. Yep. And he put them in this little pond that was, I mean, it's it real tiny, small. Handmade. And they all started hatching and they turned into tadpoles and then started turning into these teeny yep. frogs. And then all of a sudden there was certainly not millions. I'm sure they didn't all survive. Yeah. But thousands of you frogs. You change the whole ecosystem by doing that. Yes. It's crazy. Which is hilarious, but also maybe detrimental. Yeah, I don't really know. Me I, I'm not sure about rabbits either. Yeah. I don't know how they, I'm, I mean... What I know about rabbits is they eat lots of stuff. Yeah. Like if you have gardens and stuff. But and that they, might just be from the animated movies and films I watched as a child. Yeah. But I would assume that they eat carrots and cabbage and lettuce and all that stuff. I don't know. Tomatoes. Who knows? What kind of neighborhood is this with carrots and mm-hmm. lettuce and tomatoes and Well, where did you cabbage? say that this, this town was? <laughs> Florida. Yeah. So Florida. <laughs> <laughs> you know those local Florida farms, those Floridian house farms. farms. I don't they know. love it. They love their farms in Florida. I don't know. You don't know. Well, shout out to Florida because we'll be coming back to you later on in this episode. Yeah, yeah. I know I mentioned this earlier, but it's going to be a long one. It, yeah. We might even break this up into two because we're about a half hour in and we just got to emails. Are we really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's go, baby. No way. I'm taking my sweet okay, you time. Take your sweet time. That was something that, like, when people apologize for having podcasts that are too long, I'm like, I say this to them. And they can't hear me, but I'm like, don't apologize. I'm listening because I like it. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, don't try to rush. Okay, then I got to wait another week. Okay, so thank you, Melody, for sending that in. At some point, we're just going to have to have a segment that's not emails. It's just stories. Parents. Parents, yeah. <laughs> if your mom emails in, then definitely. Oh, mom. I don't know. If you're watching, email it. Just text me. Just text me. I had to go over to my mom's house this week. I mean, I went over there a bunch to hang out with her. But uh, when the hurricane was starting, yeah, she got this massive, like three inch pool of water yeah. outside her back doors. My mom is crazy resourceful, yeah. And so she had taken these bags of sand that we had bought for some actual sandbags and filled up like thirty market bags full of sand and placed them all around like the the outside of her house. Yeah, and you got to be out in the rain while I was snuggling with the pupper. With Scooter. The Corgi that I love so much. You love him. I do. You got to snuggle with him while my mom and I were outside. In the rain. In the rain, in the mud, digging out yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, what do they call those? They're not like a trench. Uh, drains. Oh, Digging drain. out drains. Yeah. So that was interesting. Sorry I had to do that. I got lots of snugs in. He was anxious. The so dog? He, he needed love, yeah. That's probably why you love him. Because you're drawn to him because he's anxious and needs love. Just like you. Just like me. <laughs> anxious and in need of love. <laughs> it's probably oh, true. It's too true. Aww. Anyway, shout out to my mom. So if you are watching this, mom, text me. That's how I'll know. Okay, next. More emails. You Got ready? it. This one, I apologize because it was from last week and I just forgot about it. That's okay. But it doesn't mean I We're love hitting you it now. Less. It's okay. Next one's from Shim. Shimmy. Friend of the show, Shim. She says, you guys have me cracking up. I'm trying to work out. And I just have a <laughs> dumb smiley smirk on my face the whole time. Yeah. Yes. I would too. We're great to listen to at the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like doing some kettlebells. Uh-huh. Some... Uh, we're helping you work out by yeah. you laughing. You know, you're working out those ab muscles. Yeah. Some right? upper lat tries. Yeah, yeah. 
These are all workout sure. words, I think. So uh, she says, I have an unpopular opinion. Give it to me. You ready for it? Yeah. Breakfast in bed is an absolute no. Before I explain, real quick, agree? Disagree? I think it depends on what breakfast is. We literally just had this conversation. Well, I think it depends breakfast. on what breakfast is. Cereal. I mean, I think you could eat that in bed and probably be fine if you had a tray. Bacon. Yeah. Waffles. That's harder. Pancakes. Getting harder. Uh, eggs. A lot, a lot harder. Baked Alaska. That's not breakfast. I think it's a dessert. It is but a dessert. But it is on fire, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And you wouldn't do that in bed, nor would you have that in the morning. Coffee? I can Coffee have that in, in bed. bed. Coffee's yeah. not breakfast. It's breakfast for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm assuming food. So shots fired by that? that. I think it was my phone oh. dropping. I don't know if the mic picked that up. It sounded but. like a but um when it landed. <laughs> so I was like, oh. Baked Alaska. I barely know her. <laughs> but oops. So she goes on to say, I just don't think eating. I don't think any eating should be going on in bed. Granted, I'm a clean freak, but the thought of rolling over on food crumbs while I'm sleeping <laughs> just grosses me out. I can get behind that and say I, I that don't. part I can't get behind the crumbs. Oh, the crumbs? No, yeah, like but no like, eating in bed at all. Um, I mean, we don't really eat in bed, so I know, but there's certain times that you might want to like allow some food products around, <laughs> like birthdays when you wake up and you have breakfast in bed for your birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. No, I would uh, um, compare like crumbs of food to sand. That's the worst. And like I, w- that we have a kid who plays in the playground and all, always brings sand into the house. And there have been a couple of times that she's like, I want to snug in bed with you guys. And I swear the sand never leaves her body because we can give her a bath and it's still there. I can she's tell gotten the, sand in her bed. I can tell the stages of my life by looking in the inside of my vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it used to be pre-kid, <laughs> it was dog hair. Yeah, yeah. Having a little girl, it turned into glitter. Yep. And then having you and a little girl and mostly turned into long hair. Yeah. And now it's mostly sand. Yep. If you have a kid and you send them to school, they're going to bring so much more sand than you think. And rocks. And rocks. And sticks. Yeah. Weird things that you're like, why? 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 Because I like it. That's always her answer. I'm like, "Mm, okay. The worst is when they color or paint a rock because then they can't get rid of it. And then you're just stuck. What do you do with a rock in a house? Like a big rock. Yeah. Softball like size of, rock. I would say the size of a potato. It, the shape and size of a potato. Yeah. Yes. Literally. That's a good analogy. Thank you. I'm like, what do you do with it? Keep it forever, Keep it. I guess. You make a little rock garden. That's what we did. That's what we did. Anyway, um, so you agree though? Um, yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm all about a slow, rainy morning when we have coffee in bed and read a book or play some games like on an iPad or Sudoku. Something but, like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it is hard to eat breakfast in bed unless you have a tray and you're propped up. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Just go eat breakfast out on the yeah, on the dining room table. Yeah. It's not that far. No. Or the couch. Yeah. Wherever. This is where we live. Wherever you choose to have your breakfast. Just not in the bed. Shim, we're with you. We're with you. Now we have another unpopular opinion that got sent okay, in. Okay, I'm which ready. Which is funny because we haven't even hit the unpopular I know. opinions. Okay. But I have to hit them if they get sent in. Next one's from John. Hey, John. Hi, SP and Kelly. I'm about halfway through last week's episode, and it gives me all the positive feels. Uh, We love you, John. You two are so fluid and play off each other so well. Thank you. Keep going. Keep going. Can I be a special guest? Yes. 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 We're talking about that. The answer is yes. I have an unpopular opinion and constant battle in my household. All right. I'm ready for it. Give it to me. Here it is. The top sheet on a bed goes pattern down. Here's the explanation. When you fold back the sheet slash comforter, you see said pattern. This is my opinion. My wife, Katie, says it's the opposite, and she's wrong. So the unpopular opinion <laughs> is the top sheet, which I'm assuming is the stretch, not the stretchy one. No, you're talking about the sheet sheet. The sheet. So it goes the bottom sheet, the top sheet we're talking about, and the comforter. Yeah, yeah. John, I understand your vision behind the aesthetic that you're going for. I get it. However, we don't have pattern sheets, number one. That's true. Number two, I've always lived by the rule of the tag at the bottom of the sheet. Should be face down. down. Yeah. (gasps) I think you may have flipped me. I think you may have converted me here. Were you the opposite way first? Yeah. I I hear what he's saying, though, because if you're going to be the person that folds it over. Yeah. um, Right. Which people do. Which people do. Then, yeah, I want to see the pattern, but we don't have pattern sheets, nor do we do that either. We just put ours all the way up to the top and put our pillows on top. Um, But I have always lived by... I've always lived Did you by... just get a, a text or something? 
You looked no. at your, your watch. No, no, no. I mean, maybe, but who knows? Um, it doesn't matter right now. I'm in the middle of a podcast. You're right. I'm sorry. Back to fire and fury. Tell me about the sheets and the way they <laughs> should or shouldn't I be. I want to answer John's question. I want to be honest with John, okay? I see you. I understand. However, it's different in our house. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because it's I, the tag for me. If the tag is on the wrong way, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm with you. It and, bugs me. But I do agree with him on principle. Yeah, I get it. Because just like if you had like a cartoony sandwich and you opened up the sandwich and flipped through all the ingredients, yeah, yeah. you want to see the goods. And so if you open up your bed, you want it, it should be inviting on top and bottom. Yeah, but he's talking about when you make your bed and like when you think about when you go to a hotel and they have like the sheet down below the pillows. Okay. They first, like fold it back. They fold it back. Yeah, yeah. We don't do that. Yeah, because Brooklyn does. But hotels are terrible. The way they do sheets at hotels. John, your your house is not terrible though. No, you're well. We haven't been invited to John's house. That's true. So we don't know. John, I want to know what's on your sheets. <laughs> I want to know the pattern. <laughs> send me, a picture. Send receipts. We want to see them. <laughs> when I was a kid, it was like airplanes. I had airplane sheets. Did you have pattern sheets as a kid? Yeah. <laughs> what were they? Oh, that good, huh? <laughs> so here's what you need to know about me. <laughs> I'm about to learn something new about you. I love... I had one favorite cartoon character. Yosemite you, Sam. No, you know what this is. Bugs I've Bunny. built Legos of this. <gasps> no. Scooby-Doo. Oh, I was like, I Indiana Jones? I loved Scooby-Doo. And I did have Scooby-Doo sheets. Wow. Yeah, and then I had like generic girl ones, you know. Like I was gonna flowers. say, like, good for you for not going the gender normative way of like princesses. Yeah, but I did have Scooby Doo. Wow. Yeah. That's cooler than my generic planes. Yeah. Learn something new about you all the time. Yep. Love Scooby Doo. Keep sending in all your things. This was Rah. an unpopular Rah. opinion. <laughs> Rah. Rah, Raggy. And it was something we solved Raggy. in marriage in the voice of Scooby Doo. So, I think you do a pretty good impression. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Hardlyworkingfans at gmail.com. Uh, Speaking of unpopular opinions in hardly working and all of those uh -huh. things, I have some unpopular opinions. Do you want to get into it? Always. Okay. So if you were following along during this week, we took the uh, the push and advice of a friend of ours, Nick, and we posted some of the unpopular opinions that we're going to talk about today onto yeah. our socials. I did not look at them for the record. She did not look at them. Uh, everyone else did. We got a ton of votes. So thank you. We picked the three that were the closest yeah. in terms of agree and disagree. But before we get into the ones that we picked... I had to bend over because I didn't plan on dropping my phone. I'm going to tell you guys, he, you and everyone listening, what some of the ones that we didn't pick were. Okay. Because it'll, they were very polarized. It'll be like really quick. Really, my really quick. answers. I won't, I oh, won't you're going to give me answers too? Yeah, yeah, I won't dive into it. I'll just say yes or no. All right, perfect. So I'm pulling it up right now. Here was the first one that was I liked but didn't get used. Unpopular opinions. Mini golf is not for groups of more than four people. True. You are correct. 83% of people agreed. Yeah. Only 17% didn't. Next. Mm, nope. That's one we're talking about. <laughs> that's one we're talking about. This one almost, it was 1% away from getting talked about on okay. the show. Bachelor slash bachelorette parties are pointless. Yeah. I agree too. True. And also 65% of people agreed. 35% disagreed. Mm, yeah. Well. I could make a case why they're not yeah, pointless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they're pointless. But yeah. Next, <laughs> watermelon is the worst fruit. Not true. Not even close. Cantaloupe. A yeah, any lopes or papaya. Papaya. The Sorry, smell. Shim. Ugh. It's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. Durian, which I heard is delicious, but smells like yeah, yeah. yeah. We've never had it, so I don't want to say anything about durian. But I will say papaya. <laughs> Our friend Andy told us about durian. Like I think her dad used to bring it home all the time. Yeah, I think that's probably true. And that smells terrible. Yeah, yeah. But it tastes. But she loves good? it. I don't know. I don't know, Andy. Hit us up when we're in I'm not Orlando enough. together. Um, so, yes, 83% disagreed that yeah, watermelon's because watermelon's the worst fruit. a great fruit. Although Andy can't have watermelon because she's allergic. You know what's a great fruit? A grapefruit. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you know what's the worst fruit? A grapefruit. They're so horrible. Yeah, they're not. Well, they're not worse than certain melons, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But watermelon is the best out of all the melons. That's true. Remember when we were like, we'll do it fast. Yeah, I okay. know. I'm like, let's go, baby. I can't stop. I know. Can't be tamed. Okay, a couple more. That one we're talking about. Oh, this was interesting. So this person wrote, fake it till you make it combined with hustle culture. 
is ruining our country. Yeah, I kind of think so. Yeah, and the our country part, like uh, that feels political. I, mean, I that's didn't not write the only these. thing ruining our yeah. country, but we won't get. But into I that. agree because the fake it till you make it is like pretend you're an expert when you're not. Combined with hustle culture, which is like post a bunch of content talking about how much you know about this, so people think you're an expert. Yeah. At some point, you hit the wall where like you can't do it. Let me put it to you this way. If you want to be a content creator for chemistry, there's only so much fake it till you make it that you can do until yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to do some real chemistry yeah. or know what you're talking the, about. This is the last one of the ones that didn't get talked about? It is... Okay, yeah. Then what I'll say about this... Not. Okay. It's okay. The last one's quick. What I do want to say about this is it. I think it helps to spread incorrect information. Yes. Because you're faking it till you make it, but you're hustling to make the money. You're hustling to, do, to become famous or whatever. But in the process, you're actually hurting people because you're sharing things that maybe have been true for you, but mm -hmm. probably aren't really true. I think a lot about when we went through the pandemic, all the misinformation that was being spread about, you name it, who knows, you know? And we won't get into that. That's really political. But like, I don't know. It's like yeah. instead of people actually getting news from like legitimate news sources, they were getting yeah. news from like TikTok. And I'm yeah. like, but those are just normal people. They don't know. They're just they're just sharing their opinion, but they're speaking it as if it's fact. But it's yeah. not fact. It's just your opinion. You, you're not an expert in yeah in anything. whatever the topic. Yeah, is. whatever it is. I saw this TikTok. <laughs> it was so poignant to what you're saying. It was like this chick who was like, I was just told that there's a hurricane that's about to strike California. But I heard it from the talking fish from SpongeBob. So like <laughs> the information's getting to me, but like at what cost? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so true. All right. And the last one is this. And boy, do I disagree with it. It says Monopoly is fun and not that long if you actually play by the rules. Yeah. First of all, nerd. Who's writing this on <laughs> the internet? Who's so passionate about Monopoly that they're like, it's actually a very fast-paced, exhilarating game if you play it correctly and follow the rules. You know what's funny? And I, you you did share this one with me because it wasn't going to be shared on the podcast. But prior to you sharing this with me, I legitimately was thinking about games we could play with Brooklyn and thought, yeah, we don't really like Monopoly, but I understand why it could be good for kids. Oh, such a they understand game. about money. They understand about, they learn about jail in a safe way. <laughs> <laughs> You think Monopoly teaches kids about jail in a you safe way? You get sent way? to jail. You have to. You can, people can come visit you, but you have to get out. Oh my they teach gosh. you that life is unfair. Some people can land on a free space and get a ton of money. That's like if your like, oh. great-grandmother dies and gives you an inheritance. It's really the game of life more than anything. <laughs> kind of. That's Although that game is fun. I do that like game the game of life. too. You get to put little people in your car. Here's my... Oh, that's exhilarating. <laughs> I liked life. Life is actually fun if you play by the rules. You're trying to get to the retirement center. You're trying to die before you get there. How great is that? It's Gosh, real. that is life. Yeah, it is. Look, this is my unpopular opinion, that if I can't laugh during a game... It's not a good game. I could make you laugh during Monopoly. No, you couldn't. <laughs> uh huh. You couldn't you couldn't even get me off the ledge for Monopoly. <laughs> Be like, I had a good run, but you know, boardwalk is off the table and I'm off the bridge. Uh-huh. That was dark. That was really dark. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving straight past no, it. No, but I do need to I do need to talk about this. <laughs> okay. First of all, if you need help, talk to someone because you should be here and you matter. Second of all, I'm doubling down that if you can't laugh during a game, doesn't mean it's not a good game, but it's not a party game. It's not a game I want to play. And don't invite me over to your house to play something I can't laugh at. Yeah, I do know that about you. You like to laugh. Because I'm, yes. And you like to be the one to make people laugh too. And that's okay. That's true. Host but me. also, you know this, and a lot of people who know me know this, but if you're listening to this, you might not know, is that I consciously made the decision in high school to stop being competitive. Yeah, I do know that. Because Obviously. I didn't like the way that it made me feel, yeah. which was actually great because it let me move away from sports, which was not fun for me, and get into the creative arts, yeah. which ultimately became my profession because I believe that the only competition that I have is myself, which also makes me a bad person to play games with. Yeah. Because especially if it's not funny, I will try to make it funny, which makes those serious board game people really It's irritated. really hard sometimes. It's really hard. Depends on how into the game I am. Most of the time I can get there and laugh with you. It's why we play funny games. But every now and then I'm like, I'm trying to save the world yep. or take over the world, whatever it is. <laughs> Depending on the game. I think it's trying to take over the world. And but you're over here laughing. Yeah. And the problem really is that the more serious people get about it. The more funny you try to make the it. The more I push against it. I know. So uh, don't invite me to game nights is what I'm saying. Or invite him as the host. 
He'll That's host right. It. Family Feud, Pictionary, Mad Gab. Priorities. Priorities, red flags, Any uh, of it. cards against humanity. Yeah. Even apples to apples I'll yeah. play. But don't you dare put a boredom monopoly in front of me. <laughs> ever. That's the maddest I think Kelly's ever heard me. <laughs> I get it. All right. You ready for the real ones? Yeah. So those are the fake ones. Those are the ones that people voted on, as are yeah. these. But these were the ones that were the closest. Okay, let's the see The most it. controversial unpopular right. opinions. Here's the first one. And I didn't look to see who said yes or no to this because I didn't want it to influence me. This one was, being a homeowner kind of sucks. 56% agreed and 44% disagreed. I mean, I'd like to be a homeowner. I'd like to be a homeowner. Technically, we're condo owners. Yeah. However, I do understand that it could suck because instead of when something goes wrong, it's all you, bud. You figure it out on your own. If it's pouring rain in the middle of a hurricane and you're starting to get three inches of flooding, guess what? You better hope you have a someone who can come and help you or you're no on your own. Coming. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. When you, I mean, all the responsibility falls yeah. on you. And but so the freedom think, that you get to like be able to pull into your driveway and unload groceries into your home easily or have privacy in your house in your backyard without having to run and say hi to your neighbors that live two feet away from you. We don't say hi to our neighbors. We do. We know we all, do. Of we our all of our neighbors. They're great. However, it's a lot. It is a lot. But so there's pros and cons, guys. Well, I mean, I think that's why it's so split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this was the closest one at 56 to 44%. Read it one more time to me so I know what I'm answering. And for clarification, I pull these off of the internet in lists of subreddits of unpopular opinions. Yeah. So it was written this way. Being a homeowner kind of sucks. Yeah. I, I How can agree. you deny that it kind of sucks? Yeah. I just want to say this. I agree with that. However, I would want it. Yes. I would want that type of yeah. suck. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll take it. I can figure it out. I'm yeah. good at figuring stuff out, making things happen. I, I agree. We would figure things out. Yeah. But the hurricane is a great example. Yeah. 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 Like if your house floods, guess what? You're out probably it's 30 you. grand fixing yeah. that later. Ain't nobody there to help. And home insurance isn't ever helpful in my experience. No insurance has ever been helpful. No, no, no. It's just there to make you pay money. They'll happily take your money. Yeah, but they won't always help you. Sorry if you're an insurance person. My dad was an insurance person, and now he's dead. Oh, my gosh. We talk about death in every episode. episode. I'm so sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But get this. This is how crazy it is out here, too. I got an... I kid you not. I got an email from Zillow that was like, hey... $500,000 $500,000 house. Oh my gosh. In your neighborhood. Want to check it out? Sure. Yeah. 500 uh, for a steal. house? Yeah. Four bedrooms? Two bathrooms? 2,100 square feet? That's great out here. Checked it out. You have to read the description that says severe fire damage. <laughs> this house is still standing, but is completely. Destroyed oh my by fire. gosh. That welcome to California, everybody. This is legitimately S- real. Still a half a million dollar house. <laughs> you could Good luck fixing that up. Half a million dollars for a burnt down house. That's crazy. And that's why being a homeowner kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I think they were selling a lot that you had to build a house on for like half a million dollars, too. That sounds right. Yeah, yeah. I was we're like, down the street from here. Is that cool? Yeah. So uh I think really what sucks is the housing market. Being yeah, a yeah. home buyer sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, We're not even I, home buyers. We're I'll home take, searchers. I'll take everything that comes with being a homeowner if I could just be a home buyer. That'd be cool. Did you know, speaking of this, if you want to get a house out here, it's going to be minimum like probably it's going to be between 800000 to a million dollars. It's over that now. It is over that. To get like a three bedroom, two bathroom house. It's like a million dollars. Not even nice. Built in the 60s or 70s. Hasn't been touched. Yeah. And... Monthly payments, mortgage. Yes. How do you know? Because I can. I know you. It's it's at least fifty five hundred dollars a month. At least. Yes. It's between five and six thousand dollars a month to have a house. Welcome three to bedrooms, California. Two bathrooms. Never touched since the sixties. West Maybe even coast burnt down. is the best coast. That's what I was saying. Mm-hmm. And there's hurricanes and earthquakes. What? What a nightmare. <laughs> Okay, you ready for the second one? Yes, I am. All right, this, this was one, a sad topic. This one was another close one. Okay. And I want to talk to you about it because I think we see this differently. Okay. 38% of people agree with this unpopular opinion. Okay. 62% disagree. Okay. I think that math adds up. Sure. Pickles ruin burgers. 38% agree, 
62% disagree. I agree that pickles ruin not just burgers, but they ruin chicken uh, sandwiches. Let me say this. They ruin anything that they touch when you don't want them on there. You cannot <laughs> remove a pickle from a bun without the stain of the pickle stain. <laughs> I like pickles, which I think is an unpopular opinion in and of itself. I don't think a lot of people like pickles. For some reason, you either love them or you hate them. People have to like them because every burger comes with them on. I like pickles. I don't particularly like them on my burgers all the time. And then I go back and forth um, with how I feel about them on my chicken sandwiches. Sometimes I like a little bit of pickle juice with my chicken burger, but not the pickle. And I'll eat the pickle by itself. You want pickle juice on your burger? Yeah, like you, like you said, the residue when you put a... You want the residue? Not on my burger, on my chicken sandwich. Specifically, we're, we're getting specific from Chick-fil-A. So you'll order a chicken sandwich with pickles. Take the pickles off to a have spicy, the pickle residue on? A spicy chicken sandwich, American cheese with pickles, and then I'll eat the pickles and then have a little bit of the like tart. You think you know somebody... Sometimes, not all the time. A lot of times I take them off because I don't always want them. But I actually like pickles. Like when you go to like a diner, you yeah. know, or and you a get deli, a pickle wedge. And you get a pickle wedge. It's oh, horrible. It's Who's so that not- for? Me. You and Rancan. Yeah, yeah. I like them. Shout out to our buddy Rancan. Yeah. Who gets pickles on his rider. It's literally That's cool. what he does. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. It's like a little, it's a little refreshing. I couldn't I disagree like more. I like pickles. I'm sorry. And I love vinegar. And aren't pickles just cucumbers? I don't like cucumbers either. Yeah, well, cucumber salad, didn't I fung? Yeah, you They do. taste like the word boring. <laughs> like if the word boring had a taste, it'd be cucumber. I wouldn't say cucumbers taste like that or pickles taste what, like the word what boring. What does the word boring taste like then? What food or beverage? Um, <laughs> My first thought was going to be water, but water no. is actually refreshing. Water, ta- water is nothing. Yeah, yeah, boring. Cucumber. No, I don't agree. I don't know what the answer is, but it's not cucumber. My first thoughts were like cauliflower. Cauliflower is not bad at all. But boring, boring. you can make pizza crust out of it. You, you can, can coat rice. it and deep fry it. I just it. learned you can make mashed potatoes out of it. It's pretty good. You just, we just gave three examples of why that's not I know, right. I just I don't agree that cucumbers are boring. I'm sorry. I don't know. I li- I like them. <laughs> I don't remember how the song goes, so I just do the outro to Archer. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but I like them. Wow. Okay. So we've got another unpopular opinion here. Actually, two left. And I got to tell you, if you're listening, if you're watching, thank you for holding on. We're almost at the hour mark. Yeah. So there's a good chance we might split these up and have a full episode here and a bonus episode later this week. Sure. So we'll see. We got two more unpopular opinions. This next one is expecting a big fuss over your birthday as an adult is silly. Yeah. You agree with that? Okay. It just depends on the person, I think. And I think the year. Like, when I turned 30, uh, it was a big deal to me. That was just this last year, I think. It was like, You're it was so just kind. a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, should I said when I turned 30, it'll be big to me. But when I turned 30, it, it, was, it was a big deal to me. And so I wanted it to be a big deal to the people around me because it felt like a big mile marker for me. But I felt like I brought people into it versus being like, you you make something and plan something. Chip chop. You know what I mean? Chip yeah. chop, you plan something. Um, but I think it is a little, little ridiculous if you, for you, if you haven't set expectations that you think birthdays are important for you to believe that everyone should bend over backwards to make your birthday amazing. I think there are enough places out there that offer free things on your birthday that you can make it a big deal all by yourself. Yeah, Go get sure. your free Starbucks, your free pizza, your free Cinnabon, your 12 free donuts from Krispy Kreme. That's real. That's the big it's winner. It's legit. That is your maybe free, Yeah, that's best. what I'm going to do this year. That's what I want to do. I want to get, let's but make a just, big deal about it. I want to go to Krispy Kreme. you just had your birthday a that's couple right, weeks ago when you turned 30. Really. Well, next time, get your free chips and guac from Chipotle. You know, get your free, get Chips all. and guac, good, but yeah. underrated. There's a great Good Mythical Morning episode yeah, yeah. on that on your birthday recently. Stuff. It's really good. But if you want to make a big deal about it, then do it yourself. Don't expect other people to do it for you as you're turning 27 or 42. How do you feel about people inviting you to a dinner where the only option is to have a $60 meal that you can't choose? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't feel great about it. Yeah. Uh, but I would go and support if I could. And we did. We did. And we did.
It was awesome. It was awesome. Um, okay, so I really thought that you would have a different opinion on this. No, Let me tell you what they said. I think I've changed my mind the older I get and the more I'm like, I don't really want to. But you, what you have to understand, too, is that my birthday has never been a big deal. Well, let me take the back. What? Hold on, wait. Let me just... Let me... Know, let me give some context. And I want to say this. My mom has always done an incredible job and I should put my dad in there too with making sure that like I felt celebrated. My birthday is in December, mm -hmm. two weeks away from Christmas. Mm -hmm. If that. Which is coming up here soon. Well, it's like 13 days away from Christmas, literally. Yeah. It's like really close. And so birthdays were never a big deal. It was like, yeah, we're gonna have a birthday party, but most people are celebrating Christmas right? or Hanukkah, but mostly Christmas. Um, And so you're getting presents for that. And so it's really not as big of a deal as it could. And I shared my birthday with two of my aunts. You only have two aunts. No, no, no. With and my my aunt on my mom's side and aunt on my dad's side. Oh, oh, okay. So I share I shared my birthday with two aunts, which Manhattan ants. Manhattan ants. <laughs> it came back. Hey. Um so it just it was just different. So I think I have a I had a different perspective in my twenties where I wanted it to be a bigger deal because it was never it, not that it was never a big deal. Like I said, my mom did a really good job of planning parties and making sure that I felt special and cared for. Um, but as I've gotten older, I think what's happened is we've come to this place where we're like, yeah, one of them, we're going to like take a trip somewhere. It doesn't have to be a crazy trip. It can be, we're going to go stay at a hotel for a, a couple of days and just get away. And then we'll exchange gifts or whatever on Christmas. I think that has meant more to me as I am now then when I was in my 20s where I was like, I really want it to be a bigger deal because I am I can finally choose what I want to do and how I want to celebrate. We tend to do bigger trips. Yeah. Because going away for a few days isn't usually appealing to us, mostly yeah. because we're on the road a lot. All the time, yeah. Um, so we're already get like in hotels and it yeah. feels more like work. And usually when we're like, well, let's just go to Palm Springs, you know, when there's not a hurricane. Or let's like, go to Santa Barbara. Why not just go to Hawaii instead? Well, yeah, we're like, do we really want to pay for two, three nights of a hotel yeah. so close to our house. Like no. we could just go. Yeah, yeah. And so like last year for your birthday, we went to Hawaii. Really and nice. I think we only went for like four days. It yeah. was really quick. It was really nice though. But yeah, it was nice. It, Except for the hot tub. Didn't work. Oh my it was gosh. such a bummer. <laughs> Kelly found this awesome hotel. I think it was a Hilton. Yeah. Hilton Grand Vacation. Yeah. We, we normally stay Not a sponsor. at, at Koalina Villas, which are our favorite. Not a sponsor, but we In are open to it because yeah. we love staying there. Yeah. yeah. And it's an ethical way to visit Hawaii. It is an ethical way. Get out of Waikiki, go to Oahu. Or excuse me, go, go to, to Oahu, Koalina. but don't go to Waikiki. Go to Koalina. Go to Koalina. And the villas are owned by locals, I'm pretty sure. I don't know about that, but I do know that they're awesome. They I've been there amazing. numerous times. Yeah. Uh, and we love it. This last time, we switched it up. We're like, let's try a different island. Boy, this sounds like snooty. It was terrible. It was, well, well, it was it, okay. So we, well, oh my gosh. Story time, y'all. We get to LAX on Monday to fly out. <gasps> oh. The line is so long, even though we're there two hours before. Yeah. Which we never do. No. Because we fly all the time. We're, we kind of got it TSA down. TSA pre-check, all the things. All yeah. the things. This time, it didn't work. The line was so long at... It was a Delta. It was I love Delta. flying Delta. Yeah, we do fly to flying Delta. It was terrible. There's a rule that we didn't know about that if you check in... Less than, Less than 45, 45 minutes. minutes prior to your flight, um, they can't take your bags. And so you have to go stand in the special assistant line. So assistance line. So we made it to the front with 44 minutes to spare before our flight. And oh guess gosh, who didn't true. take our bags? They didn't. And so they put us into the line where we had to get assisted. That was just as long as the other line. Yep. And guess who didn't make it on the flight and had to wait eight hours for the next flight? That was us. And to clarify, I cried multiple times. It was not the Delta representative's fault. No, no, no. About the time. I'm sure the computer locks, locks at like you can't yeah. put a bag in. I get it. But then to be sent to that equally long line. I know. I was like, there has to be a better system, a better way. It was really bad. Granted, there's also construction going on. There's a lot of different things. But yes, so we missed our, I think it was an 8 a.m. flight. 820. And then we got on, I think, a 245 flight, but or something like that. But we found out as we got closer that we weren't guaranteed to be on the we flight. We were on the wait either. list. Yeah. And I had no idea. I would have booked another flight had I known. At that point, it was too late. I was like, oh. It was awesome because we were sitting there at the, for like eight at six or eight hours. I think we ended up eating Panda Express, not a uh -huh. sponsor. I spilled my Starbucks coffee all over the floor. Yeah, we ate lunch at like 10 a.m. and you kicked an entire 
venti iced I coffee did. all over the ground. And I cried. You cried as we were about to maybe or maybe not get on the flight. Yeah, You're yeah. like, I swear, if we don't get on this flight, I'm going to lose It's a very terrible... It's a first world problem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It j- we just fly so much that we have it down to a science. And when things happen that are out of your control, and I am such a planner, I just lost it. Like everything I had put into planning this trip. And this... This trip wasn't the same trip that we're talking about. I this just trip realized was, was with the girls Andy came out and, and met us the next time. Like some friends were coming to meet us. So when we yeah. had like two days to ourselves before we had people coming out that we love, and the whole day was lost. That uh, did suck. The whole day. But that wasn't even. You're right. That was a different it was a trip. Different trip. Yeah. So the trip we're talking about. So let's just pretend that all of that meant something to everyone. <laughs> the trip we're talking about. We got to. Uh, we went to the Big Island and yeah. we got to the hotel first time. First, first time for you. Yeah. Um, I'd been there and I got to the hotel and I was like, I think I've worked here. Yeah, and I had, I had done a, mm-hmm. a DJ gig oh, for vacations. whatever it was, but yeah. I did New Year's Eve there a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is fun. It's nice. And like we check in, I'll spare all the other details that were frustrating for you. But we get there, they're like, and I'm sure you already know this, but all of our jacuzzis are uh, not functioning right now. And this is December, guys. It's it's cold. It's cold. And it's like three hotels. You have to go on a boat or a train, tram. Or a tram to get to the hotel rooms. Yet, not a single hot tub was going to work. No. Boy, when I say it out loud, it really yeah. feels like a first world problem. We just wanted to rest and relax. It's been a crazy year. Yeah, look, everyone saves their money to go on a nice, relaxing vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As did I we. I had just left my job and then jumped mm-hmm. into a new career. And really it was quickly. the first time that we were really able to just kind of take a step back and relax. Yep. And I remember putting my feet in the pool and going, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. It's too cold. It was the only trip to the water, any water location yeah. where neither of us ever got in any water. Yeah, which is weird for us. It was very odd. So that's why being a homeowner kind of sucks. No, that wasn't the question we were on. <laughs> no, it was uh, making a big fuss on your birthdays. So yeah. let me wrap that one okay. up with my thought let here. Let me hear it. First of all, 64% agreed and okay. only 36% disagreed. Okay. So pretty close, only a 14% difference. Um, I do think it's ridiculous as an adult to yeah. to make a big fuss, to expect people to make a big fuss yeah. about your birthday. I, If you know anything about me, one of my biggest joys is working on my birthday and i have had and i really mean this like the pleasure and privilege of hosting or co-hosting the nti conference for tons of amazing nurses pretty much every birthday for since 2015 yeah it's one of my favorite things i get to do and so i like to work on my birthday i like to entertain people on my birthday i like to make money on my birthday i love that i don't love the attention because birthday attention to me is like small talk right yeah like oh how you been it's just happy instead of that, yeah, they're like, yeah. oh, happy birthday. And you're like, thanks. Yeah. You do. Like, what do you say? I don't love That's that. That's it. You say thanks. Thank you. Thanks. And then they stand there awkwardly. They're Put like, do you, here's a card. Do you want to read it out loud? No. No, I don't. Boundaries. Save it. Boundaries. Yeah. Oh, that reminded me what happened today with our kid. Maybe we'll talk about that on the next episode. <laughs> anyway, I do agree that I don't think birthdays should be a big fuss. If you are a big birthday person, that's cool. Have a big party. Yeah. And have a good time. But don't be one of those people who's like, it's my birthday month. My I'm mom. turning 84. Hey, if you want to celebrate your whole birthday month, you do it. And if you make it to 84, you should celebrate your birthday. You should yeah. celebrate every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> It's happy birthday, all you 84-year-olds. This one goes out to you, all you 84-year-olds. All right, I got one more, and then we'll wrap it up, and then uh, we'll go to the next one. Sure. All right, last unpopular opinion is this. Okay. Most people are bad at basic food safety, and you should not eat food you didn't see prepared. Now, while you think about this, this is an interesting one because Kelly has a background in food service and is very food safety conscious even in our home, 37% of people agreed with this. 63% of people disagreed. But I think it might be because the second half of this is you shouldn't eat food you didn't see prepared. That's hard to do. But most people are bad at basic food safety. For me, true. that's a big agree. Yeah. Here's the deal. Yeah. My job for 10 years was working with food. And for the majority of those years, I was the one who was responsible for ensuring that the employees knew about food safety and understood 
how it was used properly within the restaurants that I oversaw. Yeah. And so I can say firsthand, not everybody understands food safety. There's a reason why you have to take a, like a two hour course in food safety and pass a test for your food handlers card. Is yeah. That food it? handlers card that expires like every five, three to five years. I can't remember. It's like a passport, like a food destination yeah, there, passport. There, there's a reason why that's a thing. It's because people don't really understand food safety and how that works. I think everyone understands that food has to be cooked to a certain temperature. They might not be able to tell you what that is. It's locked in my head. Like what chicken has to get cooked to. Like I just know it. 160. Five. There you go. I wasn't sure, but Nailed I looked it. over and I was Nailed like, there's it. a five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's obviously a food, uh, like your food safety danger zone, 40 to 140, anything within that. Danger zone. Probably shouldn't need it. It's probably bad. Um, so I, this was a tough one for me because I think I agree. I think you know this about me when we go to restaurants that I'm very perceptive. I really do watch what people do. And I make comments when I'm like, that's not good. Um, I also have a weird um, sniffer and taster, I guess I would say. Like, <laughs> I think that this is true of me, that if something tastes a little, if something can taste a little funny or off to me and you're like, it's totally fine. You're done with it. But if it tastes a little bit off or funny to me, I am done. Because I'm like, no, there's something wrong with it. It's either expired or it's past its time. It's not good. But I am a little bit more anal about my food safety stuff because of what I worked in right. and because of what I did for so long and because I literally... Um, would like walk through and test the team quite frequently and knew that people didn't know. So it's a tough question. The first part is easy for me to be like, yes, a lot of people don't know about food safety because I really don't think a lot of people understand. Unless you've worked in food, I don't think you understand all the food safety things. Um, and it's different for all different types of food. Like I couldn't really talk to you about food safety for fish, number one, because I don't like fish, and number two, because I didn't work with fish, so I don't really know. And you can eat fish raw. It yeah, doesn't true. mean eat undercooked fish, guys. Yeah, yeah. That's, but that's like, I couldn't it. tell you that. But I think it's a little, it's a lot to say don't eat food that you weren't able to watch be prepared. I would say know the signs. I think in our life, it's impossible to yeah, not yeah, eat yeah. food. Oh, because everything revolves around fast food, restaurants, eating out, whatever, DoorDash. That goes through two different people, just so you know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but honestly, just restaurants. Too. Yeah, yeah, Like, it's not like you're going to stand and watch the restaurants. I mean, didn't fun, you can. Uh, yeah. It's why, another reason why it's so great. I love it so much. Um, but... Not a sponsor, but we'd like you to be. We'd, we would happily eat all of your <laughs> Xiao Long Bao. So good. Yeah. Uh, if you disagreed with that most people are bad at basic food safety, yeah. I would say just go on YouTube, type in Kitchen Nightmare or, or oh Hotel my goodness. Nightmare. You'll see like the risks you're running. Just because someone has a restaurant doesn't mean that A, let's go with one because I don't have letters on my fingers. Yeah. One, that they know how to handle or store food properly. Yeah. Two, that the conditions in which those pieces, those food items are being stored aren't around rats or cockroaches or other spoiled food. Three, that these people, just because they have a restaurant, you can't assume that they know how to prepare food. Yeah, because they don't have the time. Because they don't. Or you'll see a cooking board that Gordon will come and like scrape off with a knife. Oh. And they're like, we cleaned these last night. He's like, this is this is years of bacteria yep, right yep, here. Yep. My favorite thing to do when we watch those shows is to see if I can find the food safety things before Gordon does. That's hilarious. Or to see if he's going to point out the same things I do. Yeah. And most of the time when he sees it, I'm like, oh, even before he says what it is, like I already know because I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. So there was one time we were watching a Gordon Ramsay show. I think it was 24 hours to hell and back is what it's called. So it's kitchen nightmares, except they're like, let's do this in 24 hours because it's cheaper to shoot it in one day. And they did a restaurant that's in our neighborhood. Oh, yeah. That I have been to. I don't feel like I should say the name, but I've been to you can look many, it up, though. many, many times. Yes. It's a Mexican food restaurant. Yeah, yeah. We've been there many times. And it's great. They're known for their bean dip. Yeah. I'll be excellent. honest. It's good food. Yeah. I and haven't it, eaten there since. No. It was shocking to see yeah. what happened. Let me get your take on this, too. Do you think it's beneficial to restaurants to go on a show like that? Because at the end, Gordon ultimately turns the restaurant around and cleans it up and it's great. And you're left with us like, it's okay to go there now. But do you think it does more harm or more good for a restaurant? I think it depends on the type of like exposure you had before and the um, type of, um, I can't think of the word because sometimes 
I just like can't. Um, the type of uh, word of mouth, like what people thought about yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You the know. type of Clout? reputation. Reputation. That's what it is. Like a big reputation. Yeah. A big reputation. Oh. Yeah. What kind of reputation they have? Um, I would say though, what I pay attention to is the three when they do the three month recap. Yeah. Like, have they gone back to what they were doing before, or have they actually made change? But I don't know because we've only ever had one restaurant in our neighborhood that we that we had gone to and could go to again that he's been on, and we both have no desire to go there again. Yeah. So in this case, it was negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we probably would have gone back there now that I think about it. Um, you know what's interesting? And I didn't what? mean for this to be a leading question, but it kind of seems that way. At some point, I looked up some of the restaurants. This was years ago from yeah. those shows. Uh huh. Almost all of them had closed. Yeah, because most of the time when he's... It, it's interesting. I mean, we like Gordon Ramsay, so we watch a lot of his shows. But we watched like Hotel Nightmares mm-hmm. and also Kitchen Nightmares There's a difference. You can always tell when someone isn't willing. And you say this all the time. Truth finds you when you're ready. Just because you got signed up for or signed up for a TV to be on a TV show to have someone come in and make your business better. Not everyone is looking to be changed. Sometimes they're just looking for, oh, Gordon Ramsay is going to come in and fix the problem. Right. People don't always understand that they are the problem. And if you don't understand that you're the problem... Even when the one of the most famous chefs in all of the world is telling you, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. Yeah. If you can't accept what he's saying, and half the time, I would say more than that, like ninety nine percent of the time, when you're watching Kitchen Nightmares, these owners, these head chefs, are like, "No, I'm not. It's not me. I'm not the problem. I don't believe anything you say." Or they'll say to the camera, "When he leaves, I'm just going to put the menu back to what it was." Oh, those are the worst. I'm like, you're an idiot. Yep. Uh, yeah. Just because you- a new coat of paint does not make. A brand new restaurant or better food. Yep. It just paint. That was the same thing. I love Bar Rescue with Mm -hmm. uh, John Taffer. Yeah. And he had a a show. It only lasted one season after. I think it was called Marriage Rescue or Relationship Rescue. It was Marriage Rescue. Or he basically did what he does with bars, but with With couples. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, while it didn't last, the premise of that show was like, I've saved hundreds of bars or whatever, and it's almost always not a a business problem. It's a person, like a relational problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do this with marriages. Uh, That show didn't last, even though I kind of liked it. But with Bar Rescue or Kitchen Nightmare Hotel, you you name it, like you said, it is oftentimes a personnel problem. Yeah. That is, then the symptoms are bad food handling, bad service, whatever. It starts from the top down, y'all. It does. And I, this, this is my unpopular opinion is that I don't think that people change. I think people at their core are who they are. And that typically does not change. Yeah. Barring like a life changing, like I should have died in this car accident yep. experience. People are fundamentally who they are. Yeah. I would I think agree you with can that. make little changes, but if that's who you are, that's who you are. So I think it is an issue of personnel yep. rather than a health or food safety issue. Yeah. What I would say Finishing up, talking about the food handling stuff. It's a little bit impossible to see all the food that gets made. You just have to make the best decisions that you can. Make sure that when you're at home, you're not giving yourself or your friends and family yes. food poisoning. Get a thermometer. It's yep. important. We have a numerous meat thermometers in our house, and Kelly tempts our chicken at least all of the time. All the time. So be smart. Be healthy. Don't leave things out. Don't leave things out. Put them away in the fridge where they belong. Even stuff you think you can leave out. Like cheese. Put it Fruit. Away. Lettuce. I don't know why you'd leave lettuce out. I don't know either. That's a sure way to get sick. Yes. So don't do it. Don't do not do it. That's all the time we have for this one. We'll yeah. keep going, but we got to break this up. Yeah. We'll see you for part two, huh? We'll see you for part two really, really soon in a few days. But if you have any unpopular opinions, questions, comments, concerns, arguments that you need us to settle, you can always hit us up on any of our socials or email us at hardlyworkingfans at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, for liking, commenting, and subscribing on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. That's it for this half of this week's episode. I'm SP. And I'm Kelly. And we'll see you in just a few days. Bye. I love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.